Good afternoon, everybody. It is Saturday, October 10th, and it's a humid fall day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today I'm going to show you how to harvest and cure sweet potatoes, including one simple trick that will make curing your sweet potatoes easier than you ever thought possible. And right here is my big bed full of sweet potatoes. In this bed right here, I have 12 Beauregard sweet potato slips that I purchased from Lowe's in two six packs for about three and a half dollars each back in late April, early May. So here we are on October 10th. They've been in this bed for about six months. So I expect the sweet potato roots in here to be very large. And then right here, I have another bed with sweet potatoes in it. This is actually the bed that I grew my sweet potatoes in last year and I harvested them, but clearly I missed some of the sweet potato roots. A couple must have stayed buried because this entire bed right here is full of volunteer sweet potato plants. So we're also going to harvest these. Hey Dale, say hi to your fans. Give them a wave. Dale's just sitting passed out on his outdoor bed love and life. It is a really nice, cool, but humid and breezy day. So back to the sweet potatoes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of pruning shears and I'm going to cut all of the vines off the sweet potatoes. And that is going to help me locate the roots better by being able to get all of these vines out of the way. But I am not just going to get rid of the vines. These sweet potato vines are actually very nutritious. So once I cut them off, I'm going to chop them up and I'm going to use them as mulch on top of the sweet potato beds to put all of the nutrients from the sweet potato vines back into my soil. And here is our sweet potato bed with all of the vines removed and it'll make it easier to find the sweet potatoes because you can clearly see uh, where the vines have rooted and now we know exactly where to pull up in order to find our sweet potatoes and you can kind of see them protruding through the ground so we're going to go to all of those points where the uh, the sweet potato vines are deeply rooted and we're going to dig them up however i want you to be aware that these sweet potatoes are going to be raw and uncured. So they will be very fragile in terms of the skin. The skin is not going to have that leathery texture. So when we pull the sweet potatoes out of the ground, we want to dust the dirt off lightly. We don't have to remove all of the dirt, just dust most of it off. However, we want to be gentle because we don't want to scratch and dent the sweet potatoes too badly. The curing process will help repair the skin and toughen it up, but we don't want to cause excessive damage. And here are all of the sweet potatoes that I was able to harvest from that one six foot by four foot bed. There must be at least 20 to 30 pounds of sweet potatoes here, and I'm really happy with this harvest. However, there is something that I want you to be cautiously aware of when you are growing sweet potatoes. Typically, I rotate the crops in my garden, and by that I mean I don't reuse the same plot every single year to plant the exact same fruit or vegetable. If you keep planting the same exact type of plants in the same soil year after year, what happens is the fungal diseases and the bacterial diseases in the soil, as well as pest eggs, they can overwinter for a season, and then when you place that host back in the same soil, they have something new to reattach onto every single season. If you you skip planting the same thing in the same soil year after year, they generally can't go an entire season without having the same host to attach onto. So you can really limit pests and diseases in your garden by practicing crop rotation. However, with sweet potatoes, it's a little bit different. And that's because sweet potatoes are incredibly pervasive. Here you'll see that I have root mass all over my garden 
all over this garden bed. The sweet potato roots, no matter how hard you dig, you're not going to be able to eliminate them all. And in my fairly mild winters, um, although the air freezes and it will kill the green growth on the sweet potatoes, the ground here does not freeze. So what happens is these tubers, they can survive over the winter and they can repopulate, they can re-sprout from the root masses that you leave behind. So where you plant sweet potatoes, chances are you will constantly regrow sweet potatoes from all of the volunteer roots in the soil. So with sweet potatoes, they have very few pests and very few diseases. So I recommend when it comes to growing them, you pick a single spot in your garden and you isolate that spot and you always grow sweet potatoes in there because they have a knack for taking over an area. And if you keep rotating your crop, you're going to have sweet potatoes growing everywhere out of control over the years. So this single six by four bed is more than enough space for me to have a nice sweet potato crop. And I'm going to keep using this same soil every single year to grow my sweet potatoes. Now I'm going to take you over to my volunteer sweet potato bed where I grew them last year because I made the mistake my very first couple of seasons of rotating my crop. And now I have sweet potatoes coming up in that area as well. The other thing that you'll notice is that harvesting sweet potatoes really requires you to tear up your garden bed. So it's not really compatible with the whole no-till method of growing in raised beds because you really have to disturb your soil in order to get the harvest. So this is just another reason why when it comes to growing sweet potatoes, you should consider just picking a spot and not rotating your crop. So here we are with our big haul of sweet potatoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly dust most of the dirt off and I'm going to carefully set them in this plastic container. And then after I'm done putting them all in this plastic tub, I'm going to show you the easiest way to go ahead and cure your sweet potatoes. And curing your sweet potatoes is very important because when you pick them, they're actually pretty much all starch and the skin on them is very fragile and they will not store well. So what we need to do is we need to store our sweet potatoes at approximately 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius or so for anywhere from five to 14 days until they develop their sugars and they develop a tougher skin on the outside so they will store and keep better. And here is our bed of sweet potatoes, which I leveled after I took all the sweet potato roots out of it. And then I mulched the top with the chopped up pieces of the sweet potato vines. And we did the exact same thing here on the other bed that had the volunteer sweet potatoes growing on it. So we'll let these sweet potato vines decompose. They make a fantastic compost and mulch. So we'll let it break down and that will refeed our sweet potato beds over the winter. And here are all of our sweet potatoes, and believe me when I tell you, this bin full of sweet potatoes is heavy. And I made sure to weigh the empty container beforehand, and it was 1.7 pounds. So let's see what it is when I actually put the sweet potatoes on it. But it is 32.6 pounds. So subtracting 1.7, that means that this is 30.9 pounds. So we'll just round up and we'll say this is 31 pounds of sweet potatoes. Wow. Now, as I previously mentioned before, in order for your sweet potatoes to be the best they can be, you have to cure them. And I consider this a mandatory step. You cannot skip this if you want to have the best sweet potatoes possible to taste the best and store the best. Now, for sweet potatoes to cure, you need to put them in a warm, humid environment, ideally with a constant temperature at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius for anywhere from five to 14 days. And in that warm, humid curing process, the sweet potatoes will develop a tougher skin so they will store better and the starch will begin converting into sugars so when you bake them, they will be as sweet as possible. Now, I have seen lots of people come up with ways to do this curing 
and a lot of times it can be quite complicated. I've seen people section off rooms of their house and they've put in uh, space heaters and humidifiers. I've seen them set up tents outside or pop up greenhouses to keep that artificial humidity in. And that's quite a bit of a process. You can easily create the exact environment that you need in your own standard kitchen oven. And all you need to do in order for this to happen is to take your sweet potatoes in a big container. You need a loaf pan or any kind of pan uh, full of water to create a humid environment. And then you just need a simple strand of 100 light Christmas lights. And they have to be incandescent. They can't be LED because the incandescent lights, they give off heat. So this is uh, the equivalent to a 40 watt light bulb. So all you need to do is you need to put your sweet potatoes on your oven rack, toss in your Christmas lights for a warming effect, put in this loaf pan, keep the door cracked uh, so a little bit of the heat and humidity can escape, but not too much that makes it cool and dry in there. And that will hold this with the door cracked open about an inch or two at almost exactly 90 degrees. And I did this last year with fantastic success. It was very simple and uh, I cured them for about seven days and it was absolutely perfect. So today is Saturday. So I'm going to probably, I'm gonna put them in right now and I'm going to take them out next weekend. So in here right now, you'll see we have our sweet potatoes. You will see in the back here, we have a loaf pan that is full of water in the back right there. And that will provide our humidity just like we were baking bread in a steam oven. Then we have our 40 watt strand of Christmas lights. And one other thing I had to do, um, I put two fire bricks on the bottom and that will provide a little bit of support for my oven rack. Because this is over 30 pounds of sweet potatoes, it's very heavy and I don't want it to warp the rack. So then just to monitor the ambient temperature, I'm going to put a thermometer in here just so I'll be able to check on it periodically and make sure I'm about in that 90 degree range. And then all I'm going to do is, uh, I have my extension cord leading out of here. I'm going to take my oven door and I'm going to put a little hot hand there so it doesn't damage the, uh, the cord. And then uh, I'm gonna fold it over. I'm gonna wrap it around the cord like that and then close it. And that's going to leave the oven door open about an inch. And that is going to be uh, just enough for some of the heat to escape so it's not too hot in there because this will get over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I did this last year, so I know this is true uh, with that strand light in there, or with that strand of lights in there. So just use that thermometer to periodically check on the temperature. And then in anywhere from five to 14 days, you should be complete. And if this sounds like a big deal to you because this is taking up your oven, really all you have to do is if you wanna use your oven, just pull the bin of sweet potatoes out, temporarily set it on your counter next to the oven, pull the strand light out, use your oven, and then uh, um, just put it back in when your oven cools down. And uh, this may be one of those weeks where you may wanna use your stove top or the crock pot or even order out or bulk cook just to make your life a little bit easier. I know it sounds like a pain, but it's worth it to get 31 pounds of sweet potatoes for about $7 and they will taste much better than what you get in the grocery store with the added mental benefit of knowing that you did it yourself and there's no better satisfaction than that. And that is how you easily harvest and cure sweet potatoes at your home with by far the easiest method that I have found. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. If you begin your shopping with our Amazon links, even if you don't purchase anything directly from the storefront, we still get a little piece of it and it won't cost you anything extra. And it helps Dale and I keep making these videos. Thank you all again so much for watching and we hope to see all of you again on the next video. Come here, baby. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. And that right there is how you harvest and cure sweet potatoes easily at home without And testing, testing, testing. And that is how you easily and that is, and that is how you, Dale, don't do that. Come on, buddy, stop. <laughs> Dirty snusser. <laughs> and that is how you easily harvest and cure sweet potatoes in your, oh, buddy.